All right, guys, road trip officially begins now. Are you excited for the road trip? Hey, I need an exclusive interview, dude. Are you excited for the road trip? I do. So, we the road trip. Hey, bro, how'd you turn that on? <laughs> Are you recording right now? We do. Yes. Road trip. <laughs> we do road trip. All right, guys. We're heading out on the road trip. Idaho bound. Summer of 2022. Oh, green light. Oh, my gosh. All right, guys. We're heading out. We're at uh, 126,854 miles right now. Stop interrupting. Hey, chill, bro. So we'll see how many miles we pick up on the trip. But it'll be a nice little end of summer drive for the ML63 and the first official road trip in this car. So yeah, check back in in a second. All right guys, we're heading out eastbound on I-90 for those familiar with Washington up here. We've got a lot of mountains up in front of us. We'll be driving for a while on this one but nice weather. Hopefully we get good uh, traffic all the way there. Nice and easy. And yeah, just take it, take it chill. See how we do with this beast of a V8 on gas. I'm in a full tank right now. Yeah, just try to enjoy a long drive. It's like seven hours, but we'll stop obviously. So my buddy told me it'll take us closer to like nine hours realistically. So, yep. two hours in right now uh, we just got on to 82 off the of 90 got like another i don't know 100 and plus miles to go five and a half hours to go all right guys stopping for some food at burger king we're like i don't know how many hours in now it's one o'clock got about four and a half hours to go but we need to refill use the bathroom get out stretch for a little bit and then we're back on the road all right guys just finished up at burger king we're already at 127,033 miles. Got a big chunk to go. Here we go. First time ever stopping at a Sinclair station. Got the nice dinosaur logo. We found all these cool toys in here. Keeping my son busy. There is a lot, huh? And draw right there. And Rachel right there. Yeah. You see this? What up, bro? Snack collection. Quick pit stop. At the famous Sinclair's. All right, guys, we put on another 200 miles. We're like just under two hours out away from our friend's house now, so the journey continues. I'll show you guys uh, the dinosaur gas station here in a second. Look at those dinosaurs! Yeah. That is cool, buddy. One net. It does. It's, it is a long two. neck. It's a long neck. Mm -hmm. And one Let's put them on one two. Yeah. And one tail and one tail. Do you want to go sit on it? <laughs> Alright, we got 
So many trucks. We got the dinosaurs over here. That my son and I were just taking pictures by. But I just thought it was cool that we we're at the Sinclair station. I've never actually stopped at one. I've seen a couple. But yeah, it's kind of legendary. I wanted to buy a little Sinclair car, but they didn't have any. So I'll have to look online for one. But anyways, onward. About two hours away. We made it. We made it. You made it. <laughs> you yeah. guys know this guy. Alexis, my son, Roshi. I'll check back with you guys later, but we made it. SUV did well. 18 miles per gallon. Not bad. Time to chill and enjoy. Our friends we haven't seen for a while. Catch you guys. All right, guys. Out with friends. What what neighborhood is this called now? Hyde Park. Hyde Park, Boise. Oh, cool. Treehouse. We're out exploring. No car stuff, so <laughs> get used to it. We're just chilling. Cool car spot, old Firebird GTA. Three cheese. <laughs> Here's a cool car for you guys. 872 GP. John Deere, baby. All right, guys, here's some Mercedes content, old W210. But it's got wheels on it. I don't know what these are. Rondell, are these something? They look kind of cool. I don't know if they're actual two-piece or something, but they look cool. Anyways, all right, guys, out enjoying some nature. Got this big hill we're going to climb up. What's this hill called? Camel's Back. Camel's Back. Going to go climb up Camel's Back and see from the top. Ladies are chilling over there. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Let's race. Look at this boss. Let's race. Who can get to the top first? Go. Here I come. Here I come. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're almost there. Hold you. <laughs> Made it. Beautiful. Flowers. All right, guys. Much later on in the day, we have a sleeping child, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we've been out. Went to a couple food spots, Cup Bop, Korean Chicken Place. We're at another park right now. Just gonna go for a little walk. <laughs> Cold too. What's wrong with me? Am I losing feelings in my nerves? <sighs> my nerves. Okay, let me put my electro <laughs> electronics away and I will walk to the beaches. <laughs> to the beaches. Hold on. Yeah, it's cold. Really? Yeah. Brooks is like, I just wanted to get my thighs wet. Five months in Idaho and I'm already a country in bump. Idahoan. I mean, I really don't like cold water. A little more sensitive than Alright guys, it's been a while since you've seen this view. Probably the last video when we were getting him ready with his trailer. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we are uh, having a boys day right now. The wifeys are out uh, hanging out and we're adventuring. Gonna go grab some food and then I think we're headed to the river. 
we'll see. We'll catch you guys in a little while. More Boise activities. Surfing in the river. They tell, they tell you you can't surf in Idaho. They're lying. They're lying. It's like that age old, like. All right, guys, we left the surfer boys. We're in uh, downtown Boise right now. There's the capital. State capital. State capital. It's pretty cool. So yeah, we're just cruising around. Going back home soon. There's a walking man. Somebody historic. Saturday, yeah. <laughs> Water in the tree? We're all loaded up. We're taking a guest back with us only to the grocery store real quick, but <laughs> we have an outside external camera as well. <laughs> Thanks for the Idaho adventures guys. <laughs> Thank you guys. <coughs> we'll be back Thank soon. You. It was a lot of fun. If you guys haven't been to Idaho, we see. Come see it, you know, maybe. It's not bad. Check it out. Anyways, we're on our way back home. See ya. All right, guys, quick pit stop on the way home. Shout out Crossroads Towing and Salvage. Road trip snag. My mother-in-law's Toyota Echo needed a door. We found one, 100 bucks. Got a yard, they pull it for you. I didn't have to pull it, so 65 normally to pick and pull, but I would have had to do all the work. 100 bucks for them to do it, not bad. Yeah, on the road again. All right, guys, first pit stop on the way back home. See some horses, or as my son calls, hehes. Sick Harley right there. Got some snacks, and I was at like half a tank, but I figured might as well fill up now because I don't know when the next uh, stop's gonna be, so. Do it here, V8 life. We're somewhere in Fruitland right now. It's been, uh, hot day so far so it's gonna be hot most of the way home taking off here soon getting some gas it is 517 at the station which is kind of expensive but not the worst so yeah going on you guys realized that the clips that i had for the end of the road trip video were actually time lapses because my son had changed the settings on the gopro as you guys saw he really likes using that thing so anyways i figured i'd do the outro right now uh, and before we do the outro i'm actually gonna do an oil change on the ml63 because it's definitely due it's been about 5,000 miles since the last one and actually i wanted to change it around 3,000, but you know life happens more miles got put on it so we're gonna go ahead and take care of that. Also, shout out to Sam AMG, making the M156 63 shirts. Always helpful to uh, check out his videos and we became friends and everything from just talking and chatting about the cars. So yeah, shout out to you and uh, go check them out if you haven't already. That being said, let me show you guys what the mileage is at right now and we'll give it a startup and I'll tell you guys what I've been experiencing with the M156 in this uh, time span. All right, so we are at now 128,231 miles on the ML63, and it's been pretty gold. I mean, it was around 100 and I'd have to look back at the videos, 121 or 22,000 when we did the head bolts and lifters and cam adjusters and all that stuff. So it's been really solid since then. We've been using it a ton, obviously. I mean, we've covered 7,000 miles or so in the last few months, which is a lot for my cars now since we kind of share the miles between all four of them, but. Um, it's been great. The only thing that started soon after we got back from the road trip, which I don't think the oil is low, but I'm hearing a slight uh, little lifter tick kind of 
typical uh, valve train noise for the M156 um, from the driver's side bank. So I figured it's time to change the oil and I'm gonna be trying out the Liquamali Ceratec to see uh, you know what it does and if it improves anything. I hadn't heard that noise at all um, in that whole time period before that. I don't hear it when I'm driving. It's only like very faint at idle. I'll see if I can uh, show you guys the noise once I take it on a drive right now and I uh, get to my parents to change the oil. So yeah, uh, let's go over there. Not enough wasting time with talking and let's just get into it. All right guys, made it over. Wanted to let you guys listen to the sound just to kind of see what it is. Now in my case, I know everything is fresh. So the only real thing I'm looking to do is change the fluids. I feel like it's just time to do it. But here's what it sounds like. It's not horrible, but yeah, I'm definitely hearing it from this side. So we'll see, we'll see what the oil change can do for it and uh, see if the adding Ceratec to it will uh, kind of help smooth things out in the long run. All right, so looking at the dipsticks, I actually have two that I've been using. I got this one from the junkyard, which is like about an inch or so longer than the ML631, but um, I don't know if you guys remember, but when I got this, this dipstick, the plastic on it was all cracked. So I ended up, if this will focus, just notching um, the metal and chipping off all the old plastic. I should probably just pick up a new one because it's kind of hard to read on this. It's hard to see the oil on the uh, metal by itself, uh, not being smooth metal and everything like that. Grooved um, portion kind of sucks up the oil. It's hard to see exactly where it's at. So comparing though, what I can see on the other one, um, it definitely seems like it's a little low right now. So that could be one of the big reasons why we're hearing that valve train tick. Um, it's kind of a known thing if they get a quart lower so that they'll start to tick so could have been it uh but i didn't get any warning on the dash or anything so i never filled it up and the dipstick always looked somewhat close so i just i think i added maybe maybe a quart in that whole time i'm um, just kind of thinking that i should so yeah we'll see how much comes out and then we'll go ahead and fill her up all right guys we got both spots draining right now the oil cooler and the uh, plug, the oil is still looking like the uh, red line red, so it's not super dirty, but uh, definitely not brand new anymore either. So I'll let all that drain out of there. Got everything off up top. And uh, we'll take a look at this oil filter once it cools down a little bit more. Um, and overall underneath, while I'm under here and doing this, I'm also going to go through and kind of spray on the uh rust protector that i have uh let's see i think it's in here same stuff i used to like coat all of the little hinges and stuff it's worked really well um it's the crc corrosion inhibitor i'm just gonna try to get this in all the little nooks and crannies that i can because if you don't know already this car was originally a canada car uh, British Columbia or somewhere around there, Vancouver, I can't remember. Um, and uh, definitely was seeing some salt. So no like major structural components have any type of rust, but definitely bolts and little things like that are picking up some surface rust. So it's good to just throw this on, keep it from getting any worse. All right, guys, oil is drained. New uh, washers and everything are on the two plugs. I'm going to do the uh, filter right now. We'll check out what it looks like. Take a look inside the pleats. And then we'll go ahead and get this thing filled up with, I can't remember, what, 11 something quarts, something crazy. We'll see. All right, our red line oil is ready to go in. Same stuff I used last time, 10W40. Uh, I've already shaken all these up. Always a good thing to do to get everything mixed around nicely. And then we are going to be using two 300 milliliter bottles of the Liquamali Ceratec. Um, you know, we'll see. It's, I'm not really... Uh, an oil additive type of person typically, but you know, for an engine like this, doesn't hurt to uh, try it out since it's had such good results uh, overall with people and enthusiasts running these engines. So two and a half gallons, it's a little bit over. So I'm just gonna try to get as close as I can. It's hard to eyeball these red gallon jugs. So I think what I did last time was pour it in two and then I basically 
poured out half into another one so I could see exactly where it was sitting because I don't know why certain I love you guys red line but I don't know why certain manufacturers don't put the clear line on the back it's probably just a you know I don't know manufacturing thing but it's it's super hard to know <laughs> where your oil is if you're not like holding it up to a light or something it just makes it way easier to see the uh, clear line but anyways we'll do what we got to do i'll stick the funnel on here and i'll let you guys time lapse it out Okay, oil is in, now time for the Ceratec. Directions on this stuff say shake it thoroughly, so definitely do so. From reading online, uh, like Bob is the oil guy and nerdy oil sites like that, it seems like the biggest component of this is uh, high, high concentrations of boron and molybdenum, which are, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, properties or or content chemicals whatever they are uh, that really help with kind of slickness if you want to keep it in layman's terms of all the different interacting components and then obviously it's got to have some sort of uh, ceramic component to it or maybe that's just the name but I yeah ceramic compounds and chemical anti-wear agents so looks like 300 milliliters is good for three to five liters so in our case um 0.9 gallons 1.3 gallons that's what that is so we definitely need two of these um yeah 2.6 basically is the max for that five liters um so two of these is definitely what we want to use so go ahead and throw this in here i don't know what this stuff looks like let's see all right, this stuff looks terrifying. <laughs> it looks like what you don't want to see in your oil milkshake. It's almost like a Thai tea or something. But anyways, bottoms up, I guess. Whoa. Yeah, literally, it looks like a protein shake or something. Interesting. But hey. Liquid Molly seem to know what they're doing, so uh, most products I've tried from them I trust. Haven't got their oil yet. I probably should try it sometime, but I have tried uh, the Liquid Molly Motor Oil Saver, and that did wonders for the C55. I ran like two bottles or one bottle of it, and that thing has stopped, uh, you know, the blue smoke on startups after I haven't driven it for like a week. It really doesn't happen anymore. Uh, oil consumption has definitely gone down in it too, so definitely a product uh, I have on radar anytime I need to use something of that such. Uh, I might even go pick up a bottle of motor oil, motor oil saver to throw into this thing just to keep everything fresh. I feel like it does a really good job of lubricating seals and uh, just keeping the motor happy. So there's one bottle down. We're going to add one more in and we'll be ready to start up. All right, everything is in. I think it is time to start this bad boy up. Uh, after we do that, we'll go ahead and measure what came out um, by pouring it into the old bottles. So let's uh, go ahead and see. Take a listen. All right, I can almost guarantee that that lifter noise we were getting was because the oil was low. It went away immediately right now. Nice and smooth.
check underneath. let this thing idle for a little bit while I'm doing that uh, I'll go ahead and pour these back into the container and see exactly how much came out and uh, we'll be off on our drive after I I'm gonna check a few things underneath too, just kind of inspect the car I'll need to check my new bottles at home to remember exactly where Redline fills these up to but from my eyes it looks like we're we were possibly about half a gallon low which is quite a bit so I definitely need to keep an eye on this lesson learned uh, for me um, yeah, that was surprising to uh, see that that much didn't uh, get poured out. So I know some of it's in the filter, you know, some of it's still in the motor, but half a gallon is about two quarts. So it's not extreme, but that's pretty low. Um, so we did a lot of miles. Uh, like I said, just lesson learned for me.